What's up guys? It's Josh with Cardinal Off Road and today I'm going to show you how to make your own control arms. Now whether you want to do this because you're stretching your Jeep out like I am or you just want to do something a little bit beefier and get rid of the stock control arms. Whichever it might be, I'm going to show you the steps to take to make control arms and to do it right. Make sure you guys check the link below if you're interested in making your own. We'll have a list of parts on there. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. Alright, so the first step is to have your heim joints and your DOM tubing and then mark how long you need your tubing to be. Now remember you're wanting to measure how long it's going to be with it on the heim joint. So make sure you measure all that total eye to eye and don't forget to leave you about a half inch worth of threads for adjustment. All right, so now that this is cut off, the next thing I want to do is a taper or bevel around this edge. And the reason for that is so when the tube adapter's in there, it gives me more of a V to lay my weld in there. Now all I'm going to do is use a flap disc with a grinder and just sort of spin the tubing while I'm having the grinder on it, and it should lay a pretty good edge. All right, so now you can see I have a nice V right here, and what that's gonna allow me to do is get more weld down in there and make that joint a lot stronger. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is called a rosette weld or a plug weld, and all that is is drilling a hole through the tubing to allow me to throw some weld on the tube adapter and then weld it to the DOM. And that's more or less some insurance, just in case this weld would ever fail, and this would start spinning out. Now in order to do this, it's very simple. I'm going to measure from this bottom of the taper over, find the center, throw that mark on this tubing, and then drill the hole. Now I'm going to drill up to a half inch hole, that way it allow me plenty of room to get some weld in there. Alright, so here's my hole. Now I have to do slide this in, just like so, and like I said, now I can fill that up. Now when you go to weld this, make sure, see if this will focus, there you go, make sure that you start your weld down in there on that tube adapter. Don't start your weld up here and then try getting down that tube adapter because you're not going to get much weld down there. Make sure you get all your weld that you can down in onto that tube adapter and then as you come out just start turning it and then you'll weld onto that. Otherwise it's not going to be really beneficial if you don't get very much weld on the tube adapter. So I went ahead and tacked these tube adapters into place. That's just to keep these from moving around on me. Now I also removed the heim joint to keep the heat off the heim. And I also put a little bit of tip dope in here just to keep the weld splatter from hopefully sticking. Now one thing I did just to show you guys how much I'm going to weld at a time is I divide this up into forks around the tube. And the reason I did that is because I want to show you how much I'm actually going to weld in one sitting. And the reason I'm only welding this much is to keep the heat down on the tube adapter. And then when I go to thread my hind back in, I shouldn't have any issues. I see some people that they'll weld the whole thing and sometimes you don't have issues but other times you have issues threading that hind back in. So one thing you do is go ahead and weld this little spot and then go to the other side weld it and just let it sit for a while and then weld a little bit more. Thanks for watching guys, don't forget to subscribe, hit that thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please let us know and check out our other videos.